if you get butterflies in your stomach every time you have to use calculate or filter functions in your decks, then stick around, as I will try to give you some tools that will hopefully bring that anxiety to manageable level. But before I talk about calculate and filter functions, let me welcome you to KnowledgeBank.pro, where our goal is to get smarter by using tools like Power BI and Microsoft Azure. You cannot get stronger if you don't train, and you cannot get smarter if you don't practice and learn, and we're hoping to help with both here on our channel. Now we can get back to our regular broadcasting. So if you are anxious about using calculate or filter, if you get this uneasy feeling that you kind of understand what's happening, but not really, most likely the issue is that you may have missed or there's some lack of clarity in a couple of fundamental things that would be good to understand and fill in the gaps before we talk about the, the actual functions themselves. So what I've done is um, I've created a very simple report and it's a very simple data set that we will be uh, looking at as we're trying to uh, think through this issue and make sure that we understand what's happening. So the goal of this video uh, is to really give you the tools and fill in the blanks and make sure that you understand how those functions work so that you don't have to even think and worry about next time you have to use them. So let's um, let's take a look at these three charts here and I want to get a couple of basic concepts and ideas um, framed up. So let's take a look at our sales trend chart here on the left. So this chart is a very simple chart. So we have a sales data set. In, in our sales data set, we have a, um, a time column that uh, was brought into the axis and we have a sales column. And we're trying to trend our sales over time. So what's important to understand is a few things. Number one is what is happening when we bring this time ID into our axis. Physically, what Power BI does, it goes to our table and it makes a list of all unique values in a time ID column. So in our case, that table only has 10 rows, but whether it's 10 rows, a million rows, a billion rows, there's gonna be a finite number of values in a time ID column and what chart will do, it will say, it will ask the Power BI engine to provide that distinct list of all power of all time IDs. It will order them in a default sort order and display them at the bottom of the chart. So in our case, we have 10 distinct values and we have 10 distinct uh, items in our chart. The next thing that the chart will do, it will say, okay, now that I have the 10 buckets, um, let me figure out how to calculate our sales. So what the chart will do, and chart actually each individual chart will, will kind of go through the same motions every single time it eats to it paint itself. So it's, it'll say, okay, I have all of the filter buckets here, right? So you could think of these as filter conditions. And the next question is gonna say, how much of the table so we know that we're looking at the sales table. You just mouse over those measures and you know which tables they're looking at. So what sales, so the, the, the next question is how much of the sales table can I see? And the answer is easy. It depends on what filters and slicers are applied before the chart is painted. So in our case, we're not seeing any slicers on the page. We can check the filter pane and see that's also, um, not populated. So by the time the chart is about to start showing the sales values, it already knows that, okay, these are the rows in the sales table that I can see. So in our case, it can see all, all values in the table. The next question is, okay, uh, how do we paint each bar here? Well, the way it'll paint each bar is it will take this existing value of time ID and apply it as a filter to the entire table. So let's say 10% of, uh, of our table belong in, in the first period of 2020. So by the time it gets to paint that first bar, what Power BI will do uh, for this chart, it will uh, take this filter, take this value 202001 and apply it on the entire table. There, you know, so the table, by the time that, that bar is about to be painted, the table is now shrunk to all of the values that match this bucket condition. 
now that all of the records now that the table has been shrunk to the to satisfy the filter condition power bi needs to figure out how to how to compress all of those rows into a single value what do i mean by compress or trivialize uh, let's say there is a uh, hundred sales records for that period well uh, our problem is that we, we only get to show one number so if i have many many sales for that period i need to do something with those numbers that process of reducing a number from many rows into a single number we're going to call it aggregation right so we're dealing with two things in this in, in this chart we're looking at filtering and filtering is applying these buckets as a filter condition to the table and then once we apply that filter and we've reduced our table to a smaller number of records uh, then we have to um, figure out how to aggregate our 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 number from many many rows into a single row and uh, the reason I say aggregate is because there are several strategies of how that reduction of many records into one number occurs and uh, you could look into if you right click on this little arrow on uh, values you see these are all the different ways that we can employ to reduce many records into one so the most common one is sum and it works very well with things like revenue sales um, so anything that makes sense to add up average average usually makes sense with ratio so for example when we're looking at the margin here it doesn't make sense to add margins right so um, so anytime you, you work with averages ratios proportions usually what happens is some sort of averaging that's going on okay so let's go back uh, to our drop down uh, we could say sh just show me the minimum value show me the maximum value uh, those are useful for example if I look at headcount so if I have a um, a headcount number of employees in my department I had 10 in January 11 in February and 12 in March what's my Q1 headcount I'm not gonna add them up you can again average them but usually people will say the less known value uh, or something like this right so value at the last month average mean max so depending on what it is that you're looking at all of these options could be available and again the reason we have those options is we want to aggregate or reduce multiple records into a single value. What is interesting to note here that we have been able to create these charts without doing anything with filter or calculate functions. Why is this? Um, because those charts are in, in invoking that filtering and calculate behaviors by themselves naturally and um, uh, where we, we just get the benefit of being able to just bring our attributes from our tables drop them into axes or legends or values and the charts just know how to paint themselves the other thing that's important to understand is when you look at the chart and every chart will have those characteristics so depending on what chart you have, you will have an area in the chart that will serve as a filter. In our case, axis and legend. So anytime you put anything in here, it will serve as a filter. And then you put something in values. And that is something that will get aggregated. So it's very important to know that usually things that will go into axis and legend will be discrete. So we'll have certain amount of unique values in all of those columns. Therefore, as Power BI paints this chart, it knows exactly how many um, buckets, either in rows or columns, or we could create um, hierarchies. So every time it, it applies those filters, it knows exactly what the filter values will be. And then the whatever goes into values um, will just get aggregated using whatever logic that we specify in this dropdown. So by default, usually it's summing, averaging, minimum, counts and so forth distinct counts so those are good to know and understand before we jump into our um, into into deeper understanding of filter and calculate okay now that you understand that every time you're doing anything in power bi uh, you're effectively doing either filtering or aggregating 
uh, now is a good time to jump into our tables and start playing with calculate and filter functions and we're gonna start with something very very simple and kind of work our way up into more complicated logic and hopefully by us taking baby steps uh, you guys will be able to understand better and better um, how those two functions work as the first exercise we will start very very uh, slow um, we will create a new column uh, we'll name it something very creative like x and the uh, the logic for x will be sum of, s of sales sales so let's hit uh, let's uh, see what that will create so as you can see um, after I've executed this command uh, each record in our table got populated with the same value basically the sum got executed for the entire table so even though we went one row at a time um, as we were going through that row we were able to sum all of the rows and aggregate the entire sales column into a single value of 975 Now let's see what happens if I add calculate to the same sum function. Okay, you see this is interesting. Literally we're using the same command as before, sum, but the answer is drastically different. Now it calculated a value of sales in X that as if it could only see one record at a time and actually this behavior is is the behavior you need to get used to that's the default behavior generally speaking when you work on a table with a few exceptions as you execute those commands um, you're doing it one row at a time and uh, if i had said just sales sales then it would be able to only see that one value of that of that cell in that one row so when we added calculate function to our sum, what did we do? We said, apply the default set of filters on my table. And what does that mean? Well, we're doing it one row at a time. So when calculate is in effect, it says, which row are you in? In row number one. Well, shrink the entire table so that you can only see this one row and then when we execute our sum command, our sum command does the sum only on one row. So before sum could see the entire table and it summed up all of the columns, but the minute we added calculate, we're now forcing this filter, the default filter behavior. And by default, when you're adding a new value to the columns, it can only see one row at a time. Now you can see that I have modified our calculate command and I've added a filter condition. So the way calculate works, the first part of the function specifies the expression. So an expression means whatever is in here has to return a single value. So it cannot return a table, it cannot return a column, it has to return something that's a number or it could be a string, but something that we could show either in a table or in a card or in a chart, right? So we cannot show multiple values in one cell. It has to be one value. So that's what every time you see an expression, you know that you whatever that is, it has to come back with a single value. The next thing here, as you can see by the, f um, the help from the function, is filter. So uh, what does that mean? We're saying that we're gonna, so, and that's why we use calculate function most of the time 
is when we don't want the default behavior. So in, uh, in our case, we just need to really clearly understand the default behavior is we're applying current row context, the current row filter to all of the functions. So if we did not specify the filter, we can only see one row at a time. The minute I specify all here, we're, we're now saying, okay, you should be able to see the entire table. So if I hit enter, let's see what happens. And you can see that now, as expected, we've overwritten and overridden uh, the default behavior of seeing one row at a time by us putting all behind the expression. We're now telling Calculate, ignore what the default filter is, use the filter that we are explicitly specifying here. And our filter here is all sales. So let's, uh, let's look at it from a different perspective. Let's say what I wanna capture here is the difference between this value and the lowest sale that I've had ever. So what would I need to do? Uh, the way I need to do this, I need to take my current value and then deduct the lowest value in the entire table and see what the difference is. So let me go ahead and type that in. So let's take a look at this new command now. So let's take a look at this new command now. So our logic, as we said before, is we're gonna take the current value, row by row, and then we're gonna calculate the smallest sale that we've had in the entire table. So even though we're seeing one row at a time, because here we're specifying the column, and normally this would puke, we said that expression has to return a single value, and sales sales is a column. The only reason this works is because in, in, in our scenario, when we create a new column, that will be executed one row at a time, therefore this column will get reduced into a single cell, and single cell will give us a single expression, single value. So that's the only reason this works. If we were to do this in a measure, this would never work because this is not a scalar expression that does not return a single value. It only works when we create a new column. So now we know what the current value is. We know what the smallest sale was in the table. So if I hit enter, we will see that difference. And here you could see 75 was our lowest sale. The difference with that is zero. Otherwise, you can see the difference month over month. Okay, so now we know how to force calculate to show the entire table. So again, we're looking one row at a time, but we wanna specify certain components of the table that we want to expose. Let's say that I want to compare my sale with the sale of June 2020. So I know a particular row with which I want to compare. So how would I do that? Okay, so this is the formula that we will use to find the difference between the current period and the whatever sales were in 2020, June. So let's uh, go through the components of this function. So we're going one row at a time. That's why this works. And sorry if I keep repeating myself, I just wanna make sure that you guys really understand what, uh, what is happening here. So we know what the current value is, and it only works because we're doing it one row at a time. And now we need to find whatever that value was in June. So when I am in January, I cannot see June record because I'm doing it one record at a time. Therefore, I have to use calculate command because the minute I say calculate command, I'm saying, do not worry about the default filters. I will put my own filters in. And we have a lot of different filters on how to deal with filter functions. So we have all, all selected, all accept. I will talk more about those in subsequent videos. Right now, I just want you to guys to understand what filter does. So what filter will do in this case, all you're saying is, the minute you use filter command, you're explicitly saying that I'm gonna be doing something with filters. So, so you just hint the calculate function that 
filter modifications are coming and then you're specifying where they're coming. So uh, the first thing that you the way filter works is you have to specify which table you're filtering. And if you don't put all, you're only going to filter the current record. So filter will only, if you say sales sale without all, then filter will just filter the current record and this will return nothing. So you have to specify all because the minute you say all, you're saying more than current record. So filter all, that will say, okay, don't ignore whatever you could see right now in sales table. Look at the entire sales table. And then you specify what exactly the new filter should be. And the new filter should be the sales time ID should be June 2020. Okay, so again, we're using, and this is also important. Uh, when you write this calculate function, um, you are not, calculate does not know whether there's gonna be one record that will satisfy this condition or a thousand records or a million records. Therefore, if you don't use some kind of aggregation function, calculate will, uh, Power BI will get confused because it'll say, okay, the minute you say filter, you're looking at more than one row. Therefore, by you using sales, um, Power BI will say, wait a minute, there's more than one value potentially in this column. Uh, I cannot do what you need to do. I cannot do math on a number here and then a table or a bunch of values in the second part of the expression here. So therefore, it's very important to, every time you use calculate, you need to make sure that whatever is here in, this, in the first expression, that has to return a single value. So there's several strategies. Uh, most likely, and the best way to do this, you could do min max, if you expect this to be one value, or um, you could do average, or you could do sum, right? So depending on what you wanna do, so what this will do is, uh, in our case, there's only one one record, so any of those would work. I could put sum, mean, max, average. So any of those records would, would work in this particular case, but you just need to have a strategy, right? You need to say, what am I comparing it to? So if, if this filter condition returns more than one record back and you're gonna compare current record with something that has many records, then you need to aggregate. You need to shrink it down from many rows into a single row. So in our case, we could use mean, max, because there's gonna be only one match. It doesn't matter. Um, uh, you could also do average, right? So for example, you wanna say, what was the, if I put average in here? So even if uh, this condition returns several rows, uh, this filter condition returns several rows, then the average would then say, well, on average, my sale in 2006 was X, and then I'll be able to deduct that from my current value of sales and that'll give me some sort of meaningful information. The next step and the final step in this video, I don't want it to get too long. Uh, again, there is a ton of stuff to talk about here and I will just make more videos after to drill into uh, all the other intricacies of all these functions. Um, we got lucky here because I hard coded the uh, period that we were that we worried about, but what if I wanted to look into something that's been selected uh, in a slicer or current row in a filter or even current row in a table here, right? So um, how would I do this? So for example, what I wanna do is I wanna do average sales where uh, sales are not the same as the prior time periods, right? So whatever that time period we are in, we're only gonna look at sales that occurred after, after the current time period. So how would we deal with that? So in other words, we're trying to make this dynamic. Instead of hard coding it, we're trying to have this dynamic. So every time you need to implement some sort of dynamic filtering, a good technique to use is variables. So if you wanna know what the current values are in your slicers, filters, or whatever is being passed from the chart, uh, the way you can capture it is by using the selected value function. There's another useful function that works very well when you're in a table, create column world, it's called earlier, but people have a hard time understanding how it works. So let's just uh, stick to selected value and at some point I will 
speak separately about the earlier function. So what happens here is, let's go through this. So we're still creating our column. And the next thing we say is we're gonna create our variable for current period. So current period is gonna be equal to selected value time ID. So whatever the selected row was, so if we're in a chart, that'll give me the current, you know, the time that we're, the bucket of time that we're filtering for. If we're in a, in a table, in a matrix, so I could capture all of those things that are being applied as filters, um, either from row or column, and store them in this variable. So by the time this is done, in the current period, I know what my current um, uh, time ID is. And now I can uh, go back into my filter condition. So I'm gonna calculate the difference between current value for sales, which is sales, sales. This is my current cell. I could have used, could have calculated that as well. So now I know what my sales are. And now I need to calculate what is my uh, average for sales that has have occurred after after this current month, right? So how do I do this? By default, I only see the current row. So I say calculate, which means, okay, uh, nothing's happened yet. I just say calculate, it means I'm about to apply some filters. And uh, the table, after my uh, filters are applied, might return a bunch of rows. So I'm just gonna calculate an average of sales, however many uh, rows with uh, sales are gonna come back to me. And then I'm gonna specify what my filter is. So my filter is the following. I'm gonna say, uh, take a look at the sales table and remove all filters from it. So the minute that that has run, I'm able to see the entire table. And now I'm gonna apply my, my new filter. And my new filter is sales time ID, which is the column in the sales table has to be greater than the current period. So take a look at everything that has occurred after the current period and find what was the average sales then. And then once you found it, you could deduct my current sales from the average sales then and store the difference in the column X. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, you see that this formula looks a little bit different. There was a couple of errors there, so I had to fix it pause the recording and fix it to make sure that it works. So um, let me uh, walk you through the updated formula that actually works. So high level, it's exactly the same thing as before. Um, so here we specify that we're gonna create a column X. Uh, I remove the selected value. Uh, in this particular case, it doesn't work. It returns nothing because it uh, usually works um, if it's applied to a slicer or a chart. In our case, uh, we're working with the table, so we could just use whatever the current value of the time ID is. So we're gonna save that current value of time ID in a current period variable. So now we take a single, but this time we're still looking at one row at a time. So we know what column it is, with, uh, what cell it is. We take the value of that cell, cache it in the current period variable, and now we're good. We know exactly what's, uh, what period we're in. And now we're gonna calculate our average sales. So again, whatever the filter function returns will be uh, aggregated uh, to a single value using average. Now we're saying uh, we're about to start applying filters. Uh, the change here, I applied all to the entire table, not to just one column. So by the time I did this, we're, we removed all of the filters. So what all does, it removes all filters on whatever's here. So I want to remove all filters from the whole table. So by me doing this, the entire table is now visible. And now we're applying our filter where uh, take a look at all of the rows in the sales table where time ID is greater than the current period. So in our case, it returns one row, but if it returns 100 rows, those rows will be aggregated down to a single value by averaging the sales column in that data set. And now it returns. Uh, notice that in the last row, we have nothing, we have empty. And that's what we would expect because there's no sales that occurred after 202010. So therefore, the number is zero because it, there's nothing there. Now I've changed the formula to actually deduct that average of the sales from my current row. And now we can see that 75 here. I replaced the blank row because 75 is what the actual sales value was for 2020, uh, October. So there is no records after 2020, 10. 
Um, so that difference between what happened in this month versus the average of sales after that uh, is exactly what happened in this month. So uh, as you probably see, hopefully um, you guys are feeling a little bit better with calculate uh, and filter functions. Hopefully you understand how those work and what they do. Uh, this is a very simple data set. We tackled a very simple scenario. Uh, things get a lot more complicated when you are working with subtotals, grand totals, when you have filters and slicers that are um, on the page and you want to exclude or include certain filter combinations. And that's why we have those all accept, all selected and so forth. So we have a lot of different variations of the all function. But there is no point of talking about that if you're not comfortable with calculate, filter, and all. And hopefully by now I've given you enough tools and food for thought to get a little bit more comfortable with those functions. Hopefully you are now more comfortable with using variables, calculate, filter, and all functions in your DEX code. Hope you found this video informative and please come back again for more. Thank you. Bye.